Hey everybody's cage. So here it is. This is what a guardian looks like without the uh, whole entire um, shroud on it. Okay. Um, and just so you know, you can easily take the shroud off by either removing the electronics to get the AV switch out and doing it that way, or you can do what I did, and it's probably the easiest way to do it if you've got a steady hand. That is, and actually cut the shroud okay now the best part about cutting the shroud is okay is that you don't have to so much worry about uh, uh, defects later on and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that uh, because now if I need to I can just put this bad boy back on by screwing it through the Cobra Tech clip just this piece here then these will screw on at the top here with the uh, uh, windows okay so it's Still going to look at the Guardian out of the way if you do it that way, okay? And it's just a lot easier, okay? Just cut around the base what the Cobra Tech clip is, or Cobra Tech wheel will be, okay? It'll work just fine. Uh, as you know, I don't have the pommel on. I'm going to show you why. Uh, this is a customization I did, okay? And I call it the Ambassador, okay? Um, now I'm going to show you what the blade or the hilt looks like. And I added something else to it just to give it a little more of a Star Wars flair, okay? So here's the retention screw, okay? Now because I removed all the windows and all the uh, big buttons and everything, uh, oops, sorry, the windows, and I removed all the big buttons and everything, you can see I'm hiding this right here, um, is because of, it, it gives it more room, but not just that, it just doesn't uh, screw in all the way without the shroud, so. Uh, but, however, I was able to salvage one piece of the Guardian, and that was the crystal by using a cover tech wheel and you can tell right here it's not going to come off you just have to make sure you tighten it down really good you can probably twist it up five times five full times before it actually uh, starts stripping so I would actually recommend just twisting it two full times maybe two and a half that's about it okay um, so next part is I had been wanting to do a long saber for a long time. I was going to buy Yari Pike extensions, but it just makes it look like a pole arm. It really does. It just makes it look too huge. So, for that, I have these. Okay? I took apart my Scorpion. Okay? Now, Scorpion, you can look on Jam Plagueis' uh, uh, video. He has one of him dissecting it. Okay? Is what, it's what the video is called. It's called Dissecting the Scorpion. Okay? Now, it comes in one, two, three, four, five uh, separate pieces inside of the shroud. Five MHS compatible pieces. So, uh, what I did for the build was, I only used two. This is the base. This is where your Cobra Tech wheel is, which is where that screw is. I have the screw in there so you can tell that's where it was. Okay. And then, this, which actually is where your, uh, hold, what holds uh, your... Um, Sorry, this goes right uh, below where your LED piece would go. Okay, this is where this would be down below that. Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, well, what's this do for the saber? Okay, well, it is actually uh, a three com uh, three piece component saber, meaning that I can take these three pieces and add them together. By the way, here's the uh, guardian pommel without the rings. If anyone has been wanting to see what that looks like, that's what it looks like. And it, makes it gives a very good accent when you do it this way, by the way. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you what I mean by uh, as a three-piece. You can make this saber, basically, in a three-portion saber. So, if you put this on right here, this first silver piece. By the way, the reason why I chose this silver piece is because it gives it a nice silver to black ratio. So, it doesn't just go silver, and, like a little bit of silver right here, and then straight black. It's still got some silver to it. Gives it a nice accent, I think. Now, this will act, as you can look in here, this acts as a uh, hold um, pommel. And I'll let you hear what that sounds like. So, as you can tell, it gives off pretty good noise. Now, by adding this, this is a, um, let's see here, this is about five inches, I believe, because this gives it a whole six inches 
uh, adding that with the um, uh, pommel. Uh, put this on, it lets the sound, one, travel further, and two, well, I mean, you travel further, it just resonates in there a whole lot. But in two, also gives you a more extended piece to actually work with. But still acts as a hold pommel. And you can see how that resonates in there. Now, we're going to put this on here. Now, this makes the hum a lot deeper, okay? Just because it almost shuts it out in a way, okay? So, I'll screw that on so you can hear that. Just because it resonates a little more with it. So there's that. Now, for the basics of this blade, how how to actually build it, obviously the Guardian, like I showed you, cut off the base of the shroud, it still works very well as a accent piece if you want to make it a Guardian again. Um, now, uh, the Covert Tech wheel, the uh, screw, which is what I use for a retention screw, uh, because that actually fits it just right. If you use this crystal piece though, you can use that as the Covert Tech wheel. That took me some thinking for a second there, but I, I was like, okay, um, I need to get a screw for this. The original piece was a little too long, so I was like, that ain't gonna work. So I uh, started thinking, I, I was looking to see what I had, and I saw that, and I was like, we'll try it, and then boom, there it goes. So it's a quarter inch smaller than what the uh, uh, screw is originally for this, okay? Second, you also uh, have uh, just this right here, which makes it feel awesome, just being able to hold it like this. It's still beefy like this, but still, it's awesome because this gives it, this is as a rattlesnake emitter almost. All right, because I, I think it's a little bit bigger than what the rattlesnakes is, but the rattlesnakes emitter is just like this. Okay. Now, if we move on down, you can see it's a two handed saber. You can use one hand, but God forbid you're going to be slow at it. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, I mean,. I can move with it, but I'm not fast at it. So, but it is a two-handed saber. So, definitely easier to move with two hands. Okay. Um, by the way, I still am in my small little room. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll show you how big this is. This is touching the ceiling right now. So. And this is it standing on the floor. Big difference. Okay? Big difference. I will show you, without these three pieces, what it looks like standing on the floor. Okay. Big difference. <laughs> Whereas it was at my chest, it's now at my belly. So, big difference, you guys. Um... So with this build, you can do this pretty much on any saber, but I decided to do it with this because of how it goes along with this. I, I would think, though, with how it looks, if you do it just right, you can actually take this and make it with the Liberator, okay? And make it look fantastic. Now, when I said this, uh, Palma gave it an accent like this, oh my god, does it get an accent, okay? Look at this thing. It makes it look kind of like an actual long sword or sword and a half uh, pommel. That's what I meant by it gives an axe. I love it. Okay? So, doesn't do, it doesn't take very much to actually custom this. Okay? It doesn't take it long at all. Um, actually, let me walk back here. And if you can't tell, I've drunk a lot of Mountain Dew. <laughs> And by the way, this is the emitter piece. I've been trying to figure out if I'm going to make this into like a uh, crystal chamber. But um, this is the other piece for the uh, 
scorpion here. You can see why I didn't use that, although it would be a nice accent, okay? So, however, I do love how this turned out. Because this is smooth down here, but your right hand's going to be up here if you're right-handed like me, and it gives it a great gripping, okay? Even this up here gives it great gripping. And with, even with the, uh, my hands are big, they're fatty. Even with the uh, fatness of my hands, how I went ahead and played, oh, excuse me, how I was able to place the um, retention screw and the Covertech wheel, you're actually able to hold it. So you can see, there's the uh, retention screw. Here, where my thumb is, is where the uh, Covertech wheel is. So I'm actually able to use that, hold that, and able to uh, get a good grip with that. So it still works very nicely. So. Um, and yes, you can still do things like the Cerisa Orbits. Now, given you can't hold it at the emitter with this, you would have to hold it more like this right here. Now, the problem is I have to do mine pretty low because this is a giant saber, you guys. And I don't want to hit my ceiling, so turn it on so we can see it's better. I'm surprised I did about hitting the ceiling, so. <laughs> but anyways, um, honestly though, you guys, this is would be a great custom build for any saber if you want a long sword saber. Uh, because like I said before, you don't want like a gigantic long saber because if you add a Yari Pike, you're looking at this much more on it. It's just, I mean, it's, it, it'll look like a Naginata at that time and you don't want that, so. This just makes it more like a long sword. I'm going to add a 40-inch uh, blade. I think that will make it look a lot better. But even so, the 36-inch still looks fantastic on this, you guys. So, that is the uh, custom abat amba uh, ambassador. I should do an outtake of that, but you know what? I don't care. It's already a 12-minute video. I'm not redoing this. <laughs> um, but seriously, guys, this is this is an awesome uh, a build right here. Just... And it goes to show that these sabers are really customizable and you can put as much or as little as thought and they can still look awesome and that they can be customizable to what you want. So, hope you all enjoyed it. You all have a good one.